Joining us now, Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton. Senator, welcome back to Fox News Sunday. Thank you, Shannon. It's good to be on with you. We have a lot to unpack there based on just the top of the show here. But let me start with Russia. The New York Times reminds us who ISIS-K is saying the group got a dramatic second wind soon after the Taliban toppled the Afghan government in 21 and reminds us during the U.S. military withdrawal from the company, that's the group that carried out the suicide bombing at the international airport in Kabul. They killed 13 U.S. troops and as many as 170 <clears throat> civilians. They've continued attacks around the globe. You've served in uniform in Afghanistan. How worried are you about conditions there on the ground that ISIS-K has been able to rebound to this strength? Well, I'm quite worried, Shannon, as you saw what ISIS from Afghanistan was able to do in Moscow uh, a couple days ago. This is the unfortunate echo of President Biden's chaotic and disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan. It's the same group that killed 13 Americans. Just a few days ago at the Armed Services Committee, I asked our commanding general in the Middle East uh, about ISIS's uh, capacity to project attacks from Afghanistan. He said that in as little as six months, and it turned out to be closer to six days, that ISIS from Afghanistan, with little or no warning, could attack Western interests across Asia and Europe. And that's exactly what we've seen happen. Um, it's deeply regrettable that innocent civilians, women, and children were killed in Moscow. But the next attacks could be against an American embassy in Asia or in Europe, or against, say, students traveling to uh, Europe on a school trip for spring break. Again, this is a, a very dangerous echo of President Biden's failed withdrawal from Afghanistan. So U.S. intelligence had issued warnings publicly and privately about this group and a potential attack in Russia. You sit on Senate intelligence. How worried are you about an attack like that on our soil? Well, I am very worried about it. And again, you don't even have to sit on the Intelligence Committee and have classified intelligence. You can just listen to what the commanding general of our force in the Middle East said, that in as little as six months, you could have an attack like this. And again, it turned out to be six days. He said it might be a little bit longer to project that kind of attack uh, against the American homeland or the Western Hemisphere. But again, we have millions of Americans who live or travel abroad throughout Europe and Asia, embassies, businesses there. So I'm deeply worried that ISIS from Afghanistan will end up targeting Americans sooner rather than later. Um, so what's happened in Moscow obviously is very, very sad for the people there. Um, but we have a duty to protect the American people wherever they are here in America or around the world. And, and right now I worry that they're at grave risk. Well, as a reminder, this is the video that we saw just days ago of what's happening at our U.S. southern border. And the fact is we've got new numbers from CBP. They came in late in the week. They talked about a record high for a February number. And also that up to 70 people on an FBI terror watch list have been arrested this year alone. Um, we don't know if any of those people got deported. None of our reporters can determine that a single one was. Um, but the administration is saying that you guys are the reason this is happening. DHS Secretary America said Saturday on X, Congress has to do more to support our frontline workforce, including passing the bipartisan border security bill. He says it would fix the asylum system, give our department needed tools to better enforce the laws of the border, fight cartels, and stop fentanyl from entering the country. He's pointing the finger at you. Well, Shannon, the only, the only person responsible for the chaos at our border is Joe Biden. In 2020, he said that he would reverse all of President Trump's highly effective policies. That sent a signal to everyone around the world that if you got to our border, you could get in. That's exactly what he did on day one. And we had more illegal crossings in 2021 than we had had in any previous year. And again in 22 and again in 23. That has nothing to do with a bill that Congress may or may not pass in the spring of 2024. These, uh, this chaos at our border. Border. 10 million illegal migrants crossing our, into our country's border over the last three plus years is solely the responsibility of Joe Biden. Well, you know, Democrats in the Senate are blaming you guys too, not surprisingly. Um, there's some tensions late Friday, early into Saturday as you have passed this new round of appropriations bills. A little back and forth with you and Senator John Tester, Democrat out of Montana. New York Post has this. They quote him saying, Republicans are the ones that killed the best immigration bill we've ever had on the floor of the Senate. Senator Tom Cotton, however, told reporters that Tester was privately telling members he didn't want to vote on amendments. Many of those had to do with the border. That's BS, he said. We're, we're censoring that for Morning TV. Um, Tester spokesman also called that accusation false. So did you hear him say that? Did another senator tell him you said that? Who's telling the truth? He, he was saying that to, to senators uh, privately, whatever he was saying publicly. But again, it's not just John Tester. It's people like Sherrod Brown and Bob Casey as well, very vulnerable Democratic incumbents who are scared to death to vote on anything related to our border because they don't want to offend the open borders ideologues in their own party, but they realize that it's toxic. Or voting against, say, 
making sure uh, men can't play in women's sports or against sanctions relief for Iran. That's why we were voting at 2 a.m. in the morning on Saturday morning is because Chuck Schumer and the Senate Democrats are bending themselves into pretzels trying to avoid accountability for Joe Biden's failed policies. But it's coming and it's going to come in November in the form of big Senate victories when we take back the Senate majority and when Donald Trump is reelected. So they can avoid the votes as much as they want, but in the end, they're going to be accountable for Joe Biden and Senate Democrats' failed policies that has caused this chaos in the border, caused the disrespect and danger in the world, caused the prices for everything from gas and groceries and rent to go sky high. There are a lot of Republicans who didn't vote for that spending bill that you did vote for uh, as it got across the finish line. One of them over in the House, Andrew Clyde, is a congressman who said Republicans can't righteously denounce Democrats' disastrous policies and then turn around and fund them. Your friend and colleague, Senator James Lankford, on the Senate side said this, the bill egregiously funds hospitals that perform late-term abortions. He says federal taxpayer dollars shouldn't go to those facilities. So why were you a yes vote? Well, Shannon, this is far from a perfect bill. Uh, I wish it had been written very differently. I wish it had been written in a different way. But about 70% of the money in the bill goes to our military. It funds very needful priorities like pay raises for our troops or investments in our industrial base to build up the weapons and the munitions we might need in a conflict with, say, China over Taiwan. But the, again, the only person to blame for the way this bill turned out and the way we voted on it is Chuck Schumer. Chuck Schumer, again, for a year and a half has refused to bring bills to the floor under an open amendment process because he wants to protect Democrats like uh, John Tester or Sherrod Brown who are out of step with their majorities in the state. The solution to this problem is to elect a Republican majority in November and Donald Trump. We will then be able to write these bills in a way that reflect the priorities of the American people. I want to get to a couple of other things you're going to have to get through in the Senate. First of all, uh, funding for Israel aid. There's a giant package the White House wants it all passed together. Um, there's talk in the House, they may split it into separate different pieces, but we know that Secretary Anthony Blinken is in the Middle East. He's coming back now, but he's had this conversation with Bibi Netanyahu saying, we don't want you to go into Rafah and there are all kinds of other problems we have. Here's the secretary. It risks killing more civilians. It risks uh, wreaking greater havoc with the provision of humanitarian assistance. It risks further isolating Israel uh, around the world and jeopardizing its long-term security and standing. So what about those short and long-term impacts, potentially what Israel is doing now, hindering the possibility of getting to peace long-term? And shouldn't allies and friends be able to have these difficult conversations? Uh, Sh Shannon, we're fewer than six months past the worst attack on Jews since the Holocaust. We should back Israel to the hilt in their existential war against Hamas. That includes rooting out the Hamas terrorists and leaders who are now hiding in Rafah. And Joe Biden and Tony Blinken and Chuck Schumer, rather than blaming Benjamin Netanyahu and putting pressure on him, should be helping the Israeli government put pressure on Hamas, not only to win this war, but also help bring back those hostages, some of whom are American hostages. It's very disappointing to see Joe Biden and Chuck Schumer apparently more concerned about placating the growing anti-Semitic faction in their party than helping an ally like Israel but win this more war. Than, more than a million civilians are sheltered there as well. And many of them have left other parts of Gaza to get there. If you want to protect those civilians, a simple way would be for Hamas to release those hostages and to unconditionally surrender. Okay, very quickly, because uh, we got to go, but TikTok, there's finally a bill sitting in the Senate. It seems like it's stalled out at this point. Well, I agree uh, on this rare occasion with Chuck Schumer. Chuck Schumer has said publicly that we should force TikTok to be sold to an American business. That's what this bill would do. It wouldn't ban TikTok. It would force TikTok's Chinese communist influence parent company to divest it. We've done that repeatedly with Chinese companies and other companies through the processes that we use to protect the American uh, people from foreign adversary owned companies. That's what TikTok is. Does it get to a vote? It should get to a vote. Okay. Chuck Schumer, again, has said he wants a, a bill just like this to happen. So I think we should bring it up okay. as soon as we're back from this Easter break. All right. Tom Cotton and Chuck Schumer in agreement. We'll At end least it once. there. At least <laughs> Senator, once. Senator, thank you. Thank Thanks you. you.